Again, thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. As the title of my talk said, I will talk about how can we model, or at least I try to for how can we solve models to model the structure formation in the universe, the large scale structure formation in the universe, but from a relativistic point of view. Because I mean, we have many methods to do it, so I think we have a few methods, mostly depending on the scale. I will talk more about uh, a little bit more about it later. But in this case, I mean, we are interested because we have many, I mean, we have motivation to try to do it from a relativistic, general relativistic point of view. So, no, one of the, and our main motivation for it comes from the observation. We have observations, the observations are like more precise every day. We have observations at different astrophysical and cosmological scales. Uh, modeling this observation, but require a remove a rich theoretical models. Uh, however, when we try to, to model, no, to interpret this observation, to model the, res the, the result for the observation, to model the data, depending on the scales, if we are in, we're looking at astrophysical scales, let's say a few megaparsecs, we use the, the Newtonian gravity. Is the, the Newtonian gravity numerical simulation provides a really good description, an excellent description of the structure formation with a lot of detail. Uh, as a physical scales. And when we look at the universe at large scales, that are like, well, if, if it is like really large scales, let's say 100 megaparsecs, the common assumption is that the universe is isotropic and homogeneous. So it will describe what the Freeman Lemaitre rows of work model. And if we look like a closer scale, let's say 100 megaparsecs, no, just giving like a few uh, ball, ballpark figures, estimation notes. 100 megaparsecs, say, okay, the, we start like the universe start being like homogeneous, but those homogeneities are, are small. So we can model them, but linear perturbations on a lambda CDF pattern. And that's the common picture, you know, the structural formation. However, when we look at the universe, the universe even at the scale of hundreds of megaparsecs, we start looking that the universe is not like, it's, well, it depends, it's not exactly homogeneous. If homogeneous and isotropic, and uh, we will go to 50 megaparsecs, for example, we see that the universe is actually not homogeneous. And actually, we have a structure of the order of 10 megaparsecs that I'm realizing today, like the super cross. So, could you just raise your voice for that? Okay, <clears throat> now, like, like, thank you, like super closer. So, and they are even in their own linear regime. Sometimes they are in their own linear regime. So, uh, of course, if we go down, the universe is like it's clear that it's not homogeneous and isotropic. But in this case, at least in my in my talk, I will try to cover the large scale structure formation for general relativity, uh, general relativity, but in a coarse grain mode. It's, so I'm interested in the scale of 10 of megaparsecs. In this in these scales, we have like structures that they are still not realizing today, and they are going in the nonlinear regime, the super closer. So it's there in this scale where we think that general relativity or the effect of curvature could be relevant. Of course, it could be relevant in more scales, but at least with my model, the kind of model that I will try to cover in this talk, they apply their really good description for the universe in the scale of 10 megaparsecs. Of course, if we go like deeper, you know, to a smaller scale, probably our models, not general relativity, but our models are not like a good description. They will have some problems, and we'll talk about the problems later. Well, when we try to address the problem of structure formation from the general relativistic point of view, I try here to summarize like some some of the main modes that or some of the main lines that are like, being explored today. Of course, the, the most prominent example is the exact solutions. Actually, the description of the universe as isotropic and homogeneous is based on an exact solution. The Freeman Lemaitre is Walker. I will talk, we'll talk about the exact solution later. We also have the gauge invariant to body approach. Like probably here is like, well, it's like one example of the, the formalization of the approach by Bardeen in 1980s. In this, as I mean, this is like probably one of the standard approaches to model the universe from a relativistic point of view. However, in this approximation, I just want to highlight that there is like, we assume that there is a the system of a homogeneous background. And then we put the perturbation on that background. So the perturbations are evolving within that background. So from a theoretical point of view, at least from a theoretical point of view for general relativity, we wonder how can we 
obtain that background from a theoretical point of view without assuming this assumption. No? In this case, it could come from an average procedure. But in, in molecular perturbation theory, we are putting the background by hand. And that background, that's the structure that are forming, that are evolving with that background, cannot back react in the background because the background is one assumption of the model. There is a hierarchical structure. We assume the background, and on that background, we solve the perturbations. So those perturbations cannot affect the background because the background is one of our assumptions. We also have like actually this is like more like a formalism, the one plus three, one plus three splitting of the Einstein equations is somehow the same, no, it's one, just one for like in the three plus one. This is like we are taking here projection of the Einstein equations, but somehow it's pretty intuitive for cosmology because in cosmology we have a family of fundamental observers. We are we can be fundamental observers because we are in like bionic matter or we are matter. So we have a formulosity and we project the Einstein equation in the direction of parallel and orthogonal to the proper velocities. These are like uh, quite useful to examine this solution, this uh, kind a uh, silent solution, this uh, kind of models that I will like talk about it later in this talk. There are also post-Newtonian corrections to the foreign numerical simulation when there is assumed like a weak field. Um, so there are like relativistic corrections. To the body numerical simulation. We have the relativistic Lewis approximation. In this case, like uh, this, I will talk also later about relativistic Lewis approximation and the Lewis approximation. The Lewis approximation is a nonlinear approach to start the structure formation in the universe. But it's a, it's, I mean, it's like its main characteristic is like this, like this, the, the approach is described by linear equations. By the approach is valid in the mild linear, linear regime. So it's valid below and uh, beyond the, the linear regime. And also, we have like since general, I mean, since we have been significant advances in numerical relativity recently, uh, the same formalism like the BSA, BSSN formalism has been, has been used in cosmology. So this is like a really promising line of research, I think, in my view. However, in this talk, I will like. Probably base, I will base my talk in point models. So I will cover relative slow approximations. I uh, will talk a little bit about silent solutions and exact solution, of course. So I will start by exact solution. So if we are like considering exact solution of the equations, there are like a family of exact solution. Actually, there are not so many, but there are that are interesting for cosmology. So, but to separate all the exact solution of the access equation to, from, to the ones that we are really interested in, we established this criterion, actually it's from this publication. Uh, we can display, we can define like the homogeneous cosmological models because also we are interested in model and homogeneous universe. Those exact solutions that of course are inhomogeneous but contains at least a subclass of the Feral W solution. Of course, uh, so class that is no vacuum, that is no non trivial subclass. So class. And the reason for this, no, the, the, the reason for this like definition, the, the, the physical motivation is that the FLRW so models are like a really description of the universe. So you want to improve the description of the universe, we need to look for solutions or that are like a generalization of these models. So in this case, we have when we apply this criterion to the exact solution, the family of the exact solution of the SS equations, it's, it's fair to say, it's safe to say that the most general exact solution that have direct application in cosmology is the Segres family of these uh, models. Uh, this family of models is like this is like the standard like elements. Here the metric coefficient alpha and beta, then depends on all the coordinates, time. T, X, and Y. This solution in general have no symmetry, have, have no healing vectors. However, they have certain quasi symmetry. Uh, the solutions, when we are integrating the yes, equation in these coordinates, is split in two classes. This definition depends, is coordinate dependent because it depends on these sub coordinates, these coordinates. So the first class is the one that is most has been, is more useful in cosmology. It contains like a particular subclass, the LTV modes. The second class is not has no, just, it has uh, it's have been applied less to, uh, to structure formation of the cosmology, but it's a select exact solution. It contains the family 
It's a subcase. It contains the, the family of Kantowski Sachs models. This is in the homogeneous already, the homogeneous, but an isotropic case. Of course, all of them have a well defined FLW model. The source of this model is uh, dust, is rotational dust, so there is no pressure. We can still add pressure, but the pressure should be like a function of the time. In practice, when we impose the, the conservations of the, the energy momentum tensor, we have like significant restrictions. So this pressure is reduced in practice to the cosmological constant. So we can try to go further, but it's like there are like mathematical constraints. Uh, at least the, this is like, uh, well, it's like the, I mean, we can discuss most about it, but the, the standard approach is in that the, the pressure is just like in practice just helps, uh, serves to accommodate the cosmological constant to the model. Well, saying that, it's like, how can we model this uh, structure? No, it's a cosmological structure with these solutions because these solutions are quite restrictive. Or well, at least that's our understanding. You know? They involve symmetries and many assumptions to be able to integrate the under sequence. Uh, again, so here I have the, the pictures of Rosegger's LTV. But before going to, to analyze this, because these pictures, let's say, oh, we have like a, in, the, in the answer equation, we have fluids, so we have a continuum. In the continuum, we can define maxima and minima of the fluids, for example, the density, the, the, the desired scalar. So if we can identify the maximum of this or minima of the density, we identify the maxima, the special maxima of the mass density as over density, and the minima of the mass of density as words. So it's a uh, Excuse me, can I ask a question? Because sure. I'm not sure if uh, in a single solution you have several minima or maxima, or in a single solution you have just one hole and then it's asymptotically flat. Uh, I can have several things. We can have several, actually. I would like in the next slide, we can just wait like a few minutes. In the next slide, actually, we will like talk about how can we get our life. This is the very basic picture. Uh, but yes, yes, of course, the answer is yes, we can have several and we have local maximum, local minima. And we, as in the picture of the universe, we have more than one structure. So this when we look at the numerical simulation, we have filaments and we have voids around the filament, so we can define local maxima and local minima. And those local maxima and minima, they correspond to, to a structure. Actually, in well, this, this, this case is the spherically symmetric solution. There is correspond the spherically symmetric solution of the answer equation with a dose source. This, they correspond to a family of well-known for the community working on this exact solution. This is the models, the LTV models, the met thomas bombing. And actually, you can have like a central maxima, a maximum or central minimum, in this case, a minimum of all, and you can have another, another a, 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 a extremum here. So more than one, this is in the simple picture. Actually, we can, you can have oscillations here, so we can have more than one, in, in, even in the physically symmetric case. But what I, at least in this slide, what I want, the idea, the idea that I want to transmit is like, Whenever we have a max a maximum of the density is completely degenerated along the angular coordinates because this solution is spherically symmetric. So the the the, the over density or the voids, well, in this case, if it is outside the, the origin, it corresponds to a shell. It's not like a localized structure. So what Segres does in this picture, how Segres generalizes this spherically symmetric picture in the in the sense that we add like a mother diamond. It's a function of which all the the that depends of the the, the dependence of the uh, special coordinates in my next in my next slide. But it's like Segres is like a, a dipolar modification of the spherical symmetry. So in this case, in the case of Segres, we can have the same central over density, and we can have another one, say a second over density that is it looks like a dipole because actually have like the mathematical the function that is breaking the spherical symmetry of the mathematical structure of a dipole. So we can have a second over density here. So in this case, we can talk about well-localized structures, not shells. And we can go actually 
partner, no, this is the 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 the, the functions. It's it depends on the parameterization in which it's, there is some mathematical manipulation to get this function, so I won't get into the details. But this is the in the spherical coordinates. This is the function and for the spherical model of the function that is breaking the spherical signal. This is our three parameters x, y, and z. Capital x, y, and z. They are three parameters. And if the three parameters are set to zero, we are working with LTV models. Uh, we can model up as well, we can have oscillations, but in this case, I will just focus on one on LTV model that have only one, one structure, and in this case, a void. So I will add this structure. I will ask a dipole. And actually, in this paper, we formulate, we enunciate like mm -hmm. sufficient sufficient, sufficient, uh, sufficient conditions for the existing of the of the, uh, the stream and the second mode. Uh, in this case, we just like with the dipole, we can control where we have this over density. Uh, in this case, in the equatorial plane. So we have an over, an over density here. Right? It's like we can just even go to the nonlinear regime because it's an exact solution. Actually, if we can match, and probably it's, this is related also to, to the answer to your questions, we can have more over density. We can tailor them because it's like we can build solutions that they satisfy the Yonshot conditions at the boundary. So we can create like a certain kind of onion modes. We can do even this, but here it's like we have to be careful. I won't get into the level, we have to be careful with the matching around the angular, uh, the angular surface. This surface is here. Excuse me, what specifies the density profile in those uh, peaks? Is it something which is uh, uh, stable and then it stays there? Or it's just an assumption and then it will start to evolve? Or? Well, we have to ask, we have to set initial conditions. Usually, in the initial conditions is so about the initial conditions, and then it will evolve. No, actually, this is the present day resort. Of the, this is the simulation for the present day. We start usually when we model these structures. We start like saying some of your questions. It's a really good point. We start from last scattering usually, and why last scattering? Because this structure are the source is dust. So we go before last scattering, but dust is not like a Good model to model the matter contained of the universe. So we are kind of tied to the dust source of the Einstein's equation. So we started in last scattering. In last scattering, the universe is like homogeneous, but there are a small, really small, like, for example, the density contrast of the order of 10 to minus 5. This, like, this, uh, these perturbations, they are unstable. It's a result. Actually, the gravitational instability is like the result of the structure that we observe today. So we know that we will evolve. Actually, the linear limits, they evolve like in the same forever. But the linear limit is not valid and beyond their so its assumptions. So in this case, the, we started from initial uh, linear initial conditions. We set the profile, the density, the initial density profile. We set the curvature of the velocity profile. That is in this case like the expansion. One of them of those things are related by the Hamiltonian constraint. So we only need to set two. And we set the function x, y, and c and run the simulation. Uh, we can observe how the structure even can go to the nonlinear regime. Now, this model has a serious drawback, and I will like talk about it the, more in my next slides. They cannot model the realization. So the world line will evolve forever, and we cannot cover the realization. That's that's a drawback the model. And it's like that's why we are saying that we are like also looking at the structure that is like the scale of tens to megaparsecs because our source is dust. So we cannot have like gradient of pressure or, or in this case it's rotational dust. So we cannot cover the the rotational of, of the bridge of the you know the details that happens when we have the visualization of the structure. But even though it's like this is like Lania Kia, this is like we suppose that this is our solar cluster, which is in the scale of hundreds of megaparsecs. And this is like how a past real part of the universe looks like. So, how can we model it with exact solutions? Well, the, the, just a second, let's see. Well, what we can do is like we can try to model this using exact solution, as in just like a series of banana shaped pancakes. Modeling voice and modeling over density. 
Again, this is like a really idealized with many quasi symmetries, but it's an exact solution of the Einstein's equation. We can, it's a really, it's a toy model. Not say that we have like, we can reproduce all the details that uh, M1 numerical simulation do, but we have an exact solution of the Einstein's equation. It's really easy to run to say this solution. We have explored, and actually, I just presented here my papers, but there are many papers now uh, calling the, the model of structure and exact solutions. Uh, like, uh, sorry. It's like a no. It's like a quite. It's a quite. A, no, it, it's. I mean, it's like we have symmetries, but still, it's a. It's really. It's a really easy to solve. I mean, it's a. It's a. It's a toy model of the answer equation, so it's really easy to obtain numerical simulation. And even so, there are like what, semi semi analytical solutions. We can even go further with exact solutions. Actually, the, the, we can go further, and one easy option is to consider Swiss cheese models. The first Swiss cheese model was developed by Einstein and Stauss in 19, 1945. Uh, actually, they use Schwarz's solution. They, we can imagine that the effort at W universe is a model is like is a cheese, and we can make four in the cheese. And we can put here another exact solution. In the original model, in the initial one, they put here Schwarz's solution because they were interested in examining the local expansion, the, the effect of the expansion of the universe in the local in the solar system. But that was the problem in 1945. Right now, it's like we can, with this, with, uh, following the train of thought of my talk, we can replace this force, the force in the Swiss cheese, by LTV models. And that's uh, actually a common approach. And we can even, people also put secrets. And in my case, what I can say is like, even I can, we can use, we want to use the exact solution that I presented before. We can't even match them to a pair of W because they can be matched to a pair of W. Well, we can have like more general switches models. Generally, this is this switches models are good to as a really good. Can I ask the question? Yes, yes please. Uh, uh, I'm having a physical problem. Question: What are the equations of motion for the matter? Or I mean, uh, if you if you have these rotating models, your pictures of the density patterns which you have shown is very similar to what you observe in the kitchen food processors, which have the acid eccentric paddle mixing them, and that strongly depends on the equations of motion, whether the matter is viscous or not viscous. If you have this Swiss cheese kind of a structure and each of these bubbles is rotating, then there is a tremendous mixing in the system. Wait, wait, now, in this the case, whole it's... system is mixed because there are magnus forces acting between those things. And that depends wait. on very, well, I mean between each of those two holes in the Swiss cheese, if this is a rotating something, there is a force depending on the equation of state for the matter which you are solving. That is at least in the normal hydrodynamics. And as I said, this is used in the kitchen food processors. Mm -hmm. or, it's or, all or effective. It's all and, uh, what, what happens task. with that force? It does, does uh, it? I mean, I... Uh, or I am not the, or maybe I'm completely missing understanding of this whole picture. I don't know what, what W and so in forth. This, in this case, the equation of motion is the Einstein's equations. But since we are using exact solutions, we are yeah, like well, examining the Einstein or not so Einstein, it, these the are hydrodynamic equations. There is a matter there, right? These are rotations of a matter. Okay. It's pure no, dust. It's pure dust. There is no pressure and there is no rotation. So this is only dust? Yes, it's a rotation of dust. There is no rotation here. So and this is dust. The water... There is no viscosity. There are no viscosity, no elasticity of the medium or not. It's just the dust. No. Okay, thank the, you. There is those equations and actually there is only dust as those source. And actually here is a problem because we cannot only make the hole in the FLW model 
and replace it by the exact solutions. It's actually a, a whole mathematical problem how to match two exact solutions or two solutions of the ISIS equation and have a self consistent solution, global solutions. In this case, they need to satisfy certain like, conditions in the boundary. They are the Israel Gamua conditions. And in this case, they are satisfied. So the model is consistent. It's an exact, in general, it's an exact solution of the ISIS equation. And it depends with the condition that you put in the boundary. It's similar to the problem of the Oppenheimer slider collapse when you have like a, actually the inverse of this picture. You have like a central part that is F L W and you match it to an serious Schwartz solution. And then you look for the consistency for the conditions at the boundary. And you say, we check that everything is, well, they check it, check, check that everything is consistent. So it's a, Self-consistent is a consistent solution of this equation. Not only that happens, sometimes you introduce this like layer formalism, but in this case, everything is well-defined and there is no rotation. If it were rotation, it wouldn't be like a toy model. You need to use like pretty advanced numerical methods. And in this case, I'm calling like toy models because the high complexity of the answer equation. Go on. I have a related question to this. To this so the mean density in this uh, in this patches is the same as in the like this background. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, because it's like I mean, otherwise we, you would have either collapsing or expanding structures. Yes, if you have if in this sphere kind of there was not the same density as in the blue part. Exactly, it's like yeah, yeah that, that, that's a that's a problem with the switch is more. It's like we can have violation here, but we will take the average. We are assuming an FLW, mm -hmm. so we need to recover the, the FLW mode. So okay. usually what people do is like in mind that we have LTV here, that's probably easier to understand. They they make like they try to, to take profile. This is like one of the holes. They try to, to take profile that conserve the mass. We can say it. So we can play with that, but in the end, as you indicate, no, we take like a large enough domain and we take the average. We need to recover the FLW because of what the assumption. Okay. Actually, here we have more degrees of freedom in the original Einstein problem that they replay this with Schwarzen. Mm, there are like, I think mean, it's really restrictive because when you set the size of the hole, since the model is FLW, the matching condition imposed that the mass that should be there is the same. That was contained in the parts that they took out from the from the cheese. So here we have more degrees of freedom, but there even depends on the switches more, you have more restriction of the restrictions. Um we can play with that, but as you said, no, it's actually it's a really good point, no? As you said, it's like we need to at the end we need to record the FLW because we are assuming it. So these solutions are like the exact solution. No, we can play with them, but at the end we cannot go beyond the quasi symmetries. So they have symmetries of quasi symmetries, even they are spherically symmetric. Or we are breaking the spherical symmetry by a dipole term. But I think the solution is no, it's restrictive. They have symmetry for quasi symmetry. So I'm not that the total solution is not the, the best. The top notch like approach to more the real structure that we observe in the observations. Just they are just toy models. Actually, these solutions they have like a they have another property, it could be a limitation, but also it's an opportunity to develop other approaches. Is they have like a really interesting mathematical problems. They are like silent solutions to the answer equation. What does it mean? It's like we have like we are assuming because this is an idealized model of the answer equation. So we are taking like solutions that the sources does, and also in the integration because to integrate integrate the answer equation, we get rid of the magnetic part of the byte tensor. So otherwise, the answer intention, the answer equations are impossible to integrate. So if we have this solution of the answer equation, and we kill the the pressure. There is no gradients. There is no sound wave. And if we kill the magnetic by tensor, there is no gravitational wave. So there is no proper, once we set the initial condition that the world lines are devolving, there is no information going from one world line to another. Because, you know, they need like gravitational wave or sound wave. So these solutions are silent in the sense that once we set the initial data, of course, the initial data have to satisfy the answer constraints. But once we set the initial data, 
it's like we can just we project in the fourth velocity. We can solve the world lines and the equations are completely independent. And actually, they are here. This is they are like described by five five scalars, and four of them are the five evolution linear evolution equation. It's not it's first order the evolution equation. So, like here, you know, actually the gradients are here codified to this function, but we don't see them. It's like when we set the initial conditions, mm -hmm. we check that it's satisfied of the constraint because they are exact solutions. They satisfy them. We can solve these equations, and of course, it's an exact, exact solution that provide the constraints propagates and that satisfies at every time step. So it's, it's like a choreography. We set the initial data, everything agree to our evolution, and then the world lines doesn't don't communicate anymore. They just evolve. Actually, this this condition has been used to go beyond the exact solutions. And the idea is like, okay, they, we know that the exact solutions satisfy these equations. It also satisfies the constraints. So one approach is like let's violate the constraint because we want to pay the price of violating the constraint for having to have like a to have less symmetry. So they have been using these solutions, actually we have in these papers, uh, to model structural formations using this system of silence solution of the ancestor equation, actually because silence a universe we simplify to initial conditions to model the structural formation. And it's quite interesting. Actually, one of the results of this, this paper, the emerging of the curvature can explain the tension in the power in the in the measurement of the power constant. So this is something promising, and this is something more probably that we can we should look look to. At least the people that are working like case and working with these models. And it's one of the place, one of the problems where curvature could be relevant in the universe, mm -hmm. in the large scale structure formation in the universe. Also, another mathematical property. See, sorry, this word lines uh, correspond to what in uh, physical uh, physics? Which one? What? The word lines? Yeah, this is separate word lines. Yes, it's like. What they correspond to in physical reality then? I'm trying to understand. Yes, it's like we have the. Like, we have the structure. So we said that the, the four velocity, because the, in this case, we assume that the four velocity is common. Like we don't move, mm -hmm. we just evolve okay. in time. Okay. So in this case, it's like we have a course grades. We have the universe, and we have uh, the initial hypersurface. We have the fluid elements, and this will be that the, the evolution of the fluid elements. So it will be that the form velocity of the fluid element. All in the fluid hydrodynamical language, we are using like the Lagrangian approach. We are. But then this would be some structures, or what this would be? This, this element. Yes, because when they are evolving, even if they don't communicate, their expansion is homogeneous. So eventually, we can have more line. That's all. I'm sorry. See, I messed up here. Actually, it's here. When they are evolving, the next slide, when they are evolving, we can have more lines that get closer. So when they get closer, we can have like the, the, the density when we are, those two more lines start approaching, gets higher. So probably in these pictures, like in the LTV models, we, the shells get closer and the density just start growing. And when they go, go, they go apart, they develop the, the density slower there. So they develop voids. So basically the, the, the picture is like the structure here, see these models are silent, the structure here form from the inhomogeneous expansion. In some places, this expanding is lower than in the background, so we have density voids. And in some places, it's expanding faster than in the it's collapsing faster than in the background. The, the background is expanding, so they are collapsing, so we have over density. The Newtonian language is to be translated to under and over density. It's, 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 actually, the problem that we have here is like when they start getting closer, nothing is stopped them from getting closer because we don't have pressure, so there is no gradients, we have no rotations. So they will be like infinitely closer. And since we are using the like the fluid dynamics of the Lagrangian formalism, we are following the fluid lines, the density goes to infinity, and we have partial crossing singularity. So it's not like the exact solution is not like the, the final point in the discussion because they have many limitations. Just trying to sell them like a toy model that we can use to uh to not to understand. The large scale structure formation from a non-linear relativistic point of view. 
and actually mm -hmm. not like uh, well, at least for the people that are, who are working in homogeneous cosmologies like these models has been then that this is a great model for like mm -hmm. life and they are not it has been like just explored by a few people so when they will talk about the result of general relativity is actually they are based on cosmological perturbation theory be most of it's safe to say that most of them because stack solutions or really all the degrees of freedom I can say question how they've been like called. So Ismail, please go on. Yes. So what we try what we want to do is like we want to try to generalize the stack solutions and to generalize the stack solutions we uh, to generalize the stack solutions the price that we will, we will pay to have less symmetries like the solution will be is that anyone so to differentiate from the mainstream, we try to use like okay, we want to have like is a linear linear uh, solution of the access equations, but there are values in the nonlinear regime because we are instituting the mildly nonlinear regime. So my starting point here is like stack solutions. We keep we keep them in mind, and also the pseudo approximation. What is pseudo approximation? Because it's like well, it's like for the audience that are more related to cosmology to, to the Newtonian no? the Newtonian gravity or the structure convention in Newtionian gravity, this, the, they are more familiar with the Sedo approximation. And this is quite like a this is a really good approach in the nonlinear regime, in the mildly nonlinear regime for the structure convention. Basically, the idea of the this the approximation in a few words, it's like we have like a mapping between the Lagrangian coordinates, here the capital X, and the Eulerian coordinates. So if we don't have the second term, only the first term, what we have is like in the mapping, we have just the mapping is, I mean, the, trans the transformation from one coordinate to another is just, just, just taking into account the homogeneous expansion of the unit. But the Sendois approach is actually was a really quite simple idea. It's like the universe is not initially homogeneous. There are like displacement here that are small functions, but these displacements, those displacements are coupled to the growing mode of structure formation. So initially, this is almost homogeneous, but as the structure, the evolution goes on, since this is coupled to the growing modes, this structure eventually will, this number will eventually, no, they are, that is so the, the homogeneity will grow. And this is how the filament form, the structure form. And so don't you, or this, uh, 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 these equations here are like, here the, uh, we have the description. These equations here are linear. But so don't say that they are valid in the nonlinear regime. And actually, explanation is when we have the, the equation, the explanation of the, the idea is that when we have the integration of the mass conservation in the mapping from the Lagrangian to the Eulerian coordinates, we have the Jacobian of the transformation that is related to the trajectory. Mm -hmm. And the of the trajectory, the gradients of the trajectory. So the gradients of the trajectory, we can just is defines a tensor, we can have the eigenvalue of the tensor in the diagonal. If, there is, if we diagonalize the tensor, we have three eigenvalues, and eventually this eigenvalue is statistically different. So one will be greater than the other. So the one that is greater will like make this tend to blow up, and we will have like high value of the tensor. And um, this formula, so don't say that is valid in the molecular linear regime. And actually, it's uh, mm -hmm. probably the idea is like if we are working here with a potential that is smoother than working with forces. And that's actually the idea. So, but in general relativity, we try to generalize since we have like in the, in the Sedovis approximation, we have the trajectory and we use the entity like the gradient of the trajectory, the Lagrangian trajectory. We try to generalize it to the general relativity context when we define like local objects. So uh, actually the discussion is here. You can find the discussion here in this paper. It's like we can generalize it to a co-frame base. So with the co-frame base, we can just con build the metric and we are still will stick to the those irrotational those source. So when we do it, we insert this into the answer the equation and linearize, and we assume like it's the original set those approximation of the deformation field of this term. Here is like in the Newtonian approximation, we have this first term accounts for the homogeneous and isotropic expansion of the universe, and the second one is the deformation field. The deformation field is one term that is the equivalent of the in this case of the deformation, the, 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 the displacement. 
Oh, uh, it's cobalt to the growing mode. In this case, can be also the decay mode. It's for electrochemical formation, we can safely assume also only the growing mode. So when we do it, we set this into the equation, we obtain that this equation, as we expect, this function satisfies the same equation that the linear decay mode in cosmological perturbation theory or in even Newtonian or relativistic. Um, we have more constraints acting on the special part. And those constraints come from the fact that in Einstein's equation, we have more field equations than in Newton. In Newton, we have the Boston equation. Here we have, we have more equations. So for us, it's like, how much time do we have? Uh, about 20 minutes. Ah, it's, yeah, actually, it's uh, when we have this, uh, we have like the, the, this splits into the uh, one evolution equations and constraints. These constraints just come from the fact that the Einstein equations will have more field equations. In Newton, we have the Boson equation. In Einstein, we have 10. We can kind of get rid of four using the coordinate systems, the coordinate freedom. So in the end, we have like, you can say that we have six. Uh, so it's like, but this is like general relativistic. Um, when he was in the shades, like in the Sedovis approach, it's like mm, not speculated, but they, stay, they stated that this uh, solution is non linear. They say, well, in the Sedovis approach, they have linear equations. Actually, this is the only evolution equation, but these are the only evolution equations. But the, the overall approach is non linear. Uh, it's, sorry, I forgot to mention that it's like we need to insert this solution the deformation field more the function of like in the density in the in the Sedovich case. So in a in a recent well, not recent paper, a paper two years ago, Thomas Mucker and I, uh, we just came back to this model. Uh, we compared them with second. Let's say okay, we have like the we will have like physical motivation from our paper, so it's kind of suspect that we'll find something. So we try to see what was the relation between this relative set of approximation of the second solution. So what we found the bottom line of this paper is like it's like this the this set of approximation exactly contains the second class of secret modes. I mean this is something that is confirms the initial suspicion that this or the initial statement that this approach is like uh, non-linear because the second small they are non-linear exact solution of the answer equation. Actually we, we try to Express, you know, we can play with the equation and find one equation for the density contrast in seconds. It's this equation that the equation that proves the density contrast, not the, the evolution equation for the density contrast in the in seconds mode. And this is satisfied by the uh, relativistic Lewis approximation, but also this solution is exact. But we take the initial data as in, in relativistic as in seconds mode. Of course, relativistic Lewis approximation, we have like a the phase space, let's say, of our initial condition is higher. But when we specialize to the 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 the, the, the pair that corresponds to the initial to the exact solutions, we find that they satisfy the they the, the, they completely reproduce the exact solution. So the exact solution is a particular case of the Sendoz approximation. And since the exact solutions are not linear, actually we can see it here. No? This is the the equation that is defining the linear dynamic, and here these terms are non-linear. Um, they are like the non-linearities in, in this case of the Segre smalls. Um, they are reproduced by the radiolysis of approximation. So the bottom line is that the radiolysis of those approximations is valid below, beyond the linear regime. Of course, it's like in modes that are not exact, we can use it like an extrapolation in the y in the mild linear regime. And we are in a uh, work that we are developing, we're working now. We are like kind of solving problems like here where well, I have to work on the visualization of this result, but we can have like network that somehow preserve the filaments. But the, the catch is like here we are going to the nonlinear regime, the density contrast with the order of three, and we can control the error. So we are like working in method, method to control the error, not only to run the simulation, but we have to. One set of equations that we can evaluate and we can control the error, the overall error of the approach. Or well, at least estimate the error. So, actually, uh, you already answered partly. I wanted to ask how large the deltas can be here uh, in this case in practice because you don't assume anymore that delta is very small yeah, because you have quadratic terms, which will be on the linear view. You say it's, uh, you can use delta of order of three still for that? Or... Uh, in exact solutions, 
In pre yeah. yeah. Yes, the exact solution in principle we can go. The solution is exact. So the equations are consistent given they go to infinity. We just, you know, just before the shell crossing. But the point is like this exact solution is like kind of, if we try to interpret it's like a, a, some modeling of the universe, the exact solution probably because at some point, you know, when the, the density, when we have structures, we know that those structures go into the wild by the linear regime. I mean, they are like in the order of two, three, four. But when the density also start to get high, the this silent approach is not valid anymore. So we expect them to to appear all the processes like rotation or gradients that we are unable to reproduce with this solution. So from the point of view, the answer is a question. We can go just be a below infinity. But from the point of view of the universe, it's like in the minor non linear regime, because otherwise we would have shell crossing. And the one rule of sum that we have used before is like we can try to interpret this shell crossing at the onset of the visualization. It's like a rule of sum to try to interpret the shell crossing because we have the like two more lines that are going, getting closer, getting closer, the electric become getting higher, higher. We don't know how to deal with it, but we know that in real simulations, so there should be like processes, relaxation process that will stop the collapse. And we will have like realized structures and other similarities. Can we also compare this to uh, some higher order uh, in terms of perturbation theory? Because in perturbation theory, you can you can have higher, you can, I mean, it's known for since the 80s, I think, or 90s, yeah, the higher order terms in delta. Uh, I don't know about to which order now people have the solutions, but they exist. If you compare it, how, how this compares it? Some, you know, the, well, yes, not, not so small anymore, but uh, not so large. Yeah, yes, actually, only from the point of view of exact solution, we have like, one of the references that I showed before. They are like combining secret modes with exact solutions. And the group that I was working, working with, working, I was working with a group, and they have a previous paper comparing like LTV with, sorry, with cosmological perturbation theory. Okay. Um, yeah, yes, like the, the linear regime. Of course, the predictions are the same, but then it's like there are, of course, there are a difference. We can try to go beyond the linear regime and we can uh, improve the, the, the solution. But I, I, this was somehow I thought of that much, how many others. But the point is, like, at some point when we have like cosmological perturbation theory, is, is the most at the couple. It's really a good approach because we just saw. The, the evolution for every mode and the other couple, so it's really easy. But when they we go into the nonlinear regime, the modes start being coupled, and the system of equation is difficult to solve. So some points like that, right? But yeah, there are there are solutions where they go to the nonlinear to the second order, and the perturbations are also higher. But I think that at least in my case, I would need like a motivation to do it because otherwise, you know, it's like they. There, it's like there is not clear advantage in using cosmological perturbation theory and more answer the question because they start like getting more, start getting over. Okay, so just 10 more minutes. So, okay, you have something to say. Go on. Yes, actually, it's like I have like just, I think they have just a couple of slides. Wait, so. well, the point is like this is the Seldovich, a reduced Seldovich approximation, reproducing second as class two. Second class, class two. Is the final actually the the the, the 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 branch of the model that it contains Kantowski Sachs, but not the, the most interesting one that contains FTB. So we wanted to we say okay, we have like a similarity or relationship between Seldovich and Segres class two. So we just look at Segres because we we were working with solution, we look at the Lewis approximation, we try to mix them, to try to modify, to, to extend them to have like a, let's say like a higher approach that contains both the secret class one and relativist to those approximation. Um, the, the, the way to, the more fun to do it is like in the Friedman mode, at least in the in Lewis approximation, we have the Ferrard W background and we have like the deformation is evolving on that background. It's evolving to see the background. And the background is homogeneous. But this is like, I mean, this involves like mathematical details. Detail, so it's like, I'm using, using like a specific parameter function. 
but the way to to do it is like in Segres, the equivalent in Segres class one one interpretation is like we don't have like a prima model, but we have like an equivalent just in second for the second is just like an splitting of the equations. It's just a parameterization because the solution is exact. So there is one equation in Segres that it can it take the form the prima like model. Like this one, but these parameters are inhomogeneous. They depend on, in this case, on the R coordinates, the radial coordinates. You have an idea. But this depends on the spatial coordinates. So, what we postulate for the approach is like we generalize the approach, but assuming the same coframe sets. Uh, <laughs> this scale factor, that is a conformal scale factor, will be a generalized to the premium one. And we satisfy the evolution of a reference model that will be like the generalization of the premium equation. With parameters that depends on the coordinates. So if we do it, and it's, again we as we insert this into we block this for frames with the equation, this will be the metric. This is the initial metric. We can it's one of the degrees of freedom. We insert this into the answers equations and we linearize in terms of the conversion field with the linear equations, linear evolution equations, like for the radius is always approximation. And the equations are linear, but again, we reproduce the second class one, so and also LTV. So the solution is like linear equations, they are more complicated than the radius of those approximations. But it's like a general approach. We reproduce, we can we have one approach with linear evolution equation that contains second class one and relativity of those approximation, and then second class two as well. So just just you know, this is one example. How can we generalize using this approach? We have here, this is like one representation of the same picture that I showed before. We have like here the density, and here is the dipole modification of the second resolution, the dipole of the second, the mass, the dipolar mass distribution in second resolution. We have a voice, we have the over density. So we use like second like initial data, the solution is not exact anymore, but we slightly modify the initial data. In this case, we have like a geometrical motivation. In second, is we can still assume that this we have the space is correlated by non concentric two sphere. So, with this, just we move this those two sphere, we move them differently like in seconds. So, when we change the parameter, one parameter because we parameterize this displacement with one parameter, when we make this parameter higher, uh, we uh, we we solve the ISIS equation and we generalize here. No, for example, if you say we have a dipole, and as we change the parameter, we have here like a more general density distribution. So, of course, this is just an example, it's a tall model to show the capability of the approach. And but again, the solution here is not exact. And we have the city contract of the order of two. And in the paper is the result, which is the I mean, because we work on a method to change the constraint, and when we consider like we evaluate the method to evaluate to have an estimation of the error when we have density contrast like on the order of two or three. We had errors violation of the constraint of the order of 10, or 10 to minus 3, 10 to minus 4 with dimension and dimensional responding. So the approach is still really good here no? at least for this simulation. But again, these simulations are really close to seconds. So it's not like definitely we need really to dig more into the approach to know if there is like a really good approximation for large scale structure formation. Um, this is, I mean, okay. this is like, yeah. uh, no, this is like just to, to wrap up. When we saw, uh, we started oh, with the motivation of modeling the large scale structure formation in the universe. There are methods like in the cosmological perturbation theory that are really popular, but we wanted to have like easy solutions that are easy to solve and that can serve to evaluate the, to examine the nonlinear formation of the structure formation. Of that scale, large scale structure formation. So, our starting point was the exact solutions. So, uh, more course was the, was the exact solution models. So, we show how we can play with exact solution and break the C or play with the quasi symmetry, have more general solutions that the, that the initial model really, not more general solutions, but the real model, the, that the initial model really are. But again, we, we see how we have quasi symmetries. So one way is like, okay, is we will pay the price of having no exact solution. It will be approximate method, but we can get rid of the quasi symmetry. So in that journey, we just examine the switching models as part of the exact solution. We talk a little bit about the silent universe models. 
Uh, actually, it's like, no, it's like it's the Polish community that is working in those models. And uh, in my case, uh, no, my contributions here come from the analyzer dollars approximation of the analyzer of these dollars approximation. And these models, like, uh, somehow their capabilities, like, I mean, the, the values, like, we have, like, models that are easy, really easy to solve. You can solve them in one or the computer. Just take a few minutes and they are nonlinear solution of the answer sequence where we can estimate the error, the approach. So they are really, I, I think, no, they are really good models. It's like I was trying to say, no, they are really good models to examine problems that have been accumulated for years in cosmology. Like, for example, it's like the, whole, the, 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 the tension in the whole, in the measurement of the whole bosom. It's like there are indications that the curvature could be, could help at least to alleviate the tension. So I'm not saying, I don't know if that's the solution, but I would say that we are not using the full capability of the ISIS equation to address the problem yet. Um, you know, the, the addition of a scale with the curvature could be relevant. Also for lensing, we need to get another activity for lensing. Well, we don't need, but it's like, we don't know what we are missing. So these models are really good to for lensing. Um, also, another problem that is like the, the last one that we mentioned is like the, the, one, the initial motivation. Like it's like we have, we know that the, we assume that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic on large scales, but we don't know the impact, the back reaction, how does inhomogeneity back react, back react in our emission mode. So, this is also a, an important problem in cosmology that usually we don't pay attention to it. And, I say why well, not to look at the problem of examining the problem now that we are finding we are like it seems many aspects of science, it seems that we are going towards a crisis in cosmology. Great. So thank you very much. Let's turn this to Derek. Well, you certainly have time for questions, but I'll maybe first ask people from the uh, uh, our remote viewers, uh, please raise your hand uh, or type your question on uh in the chat okay so there is a question from Julius so compared to LTB set of parameters how many more parameters do you do these extended models in, uh, introduce could there be a problem of overfitting so the problem of how many parameters you need in these models in which one in, so in LTB or in... uh no in comparison to LTB how many more more parameters do you need uh for your uh for your models to work um, well, it's like in the, the there are like some models. It's like I will just go back to to the, the what I have the diaper. The, the slide where I have the diaper. Sorry. Well, it's like we have LTV. We have just like a density profile, velocity profile. We can get the curvature pro profile from the Hamiltonian constraint. So if we want to generalize it to segregates, we need to introduce three more three parameters. These three parameters, they will like you can see, we can see of them that they will like introduce the dipole. So we have here three more parameters. Since the real universe have like so many things of freedom, we are not overfitting the, the, the problem. So we can match, we can match these models whenever we introduce the model. I mean, like in the switches. So whenever we look at the models, we just get to the slide. When we look at the switches, for example, we have here like a, we have to set like profiles, two profiles and three more parameters for each for in the switches. But again, this is like a alert and like a coarse grain modeling. So we are actually trying to, we are extremely idealizing what is there because we are just like, there is like a three dimensional distribution of this problem. So I understand that simply there is, a, you can choose functional profiles of these uh, angular dependent uh, over densities, and so there's a lot of parameters to choose from. Okay, uh, are there any questions from the audience? Okay, so Professor Chen. Yeah. I have a question which to some extent follows the question of Lukasz Kulski before, namely, when you aim at modeling over densities at the scale of the few megaparsecs, then baryonic processes are important. So then 
uh, heating, cooling, radiation, inflow, in outflow. It's not just dark matter there. And can you incorporate this in your model? Probably not because you have dust. So you model only dark matter. And that is okay at distances of, let's say, 100 megapascals. Correct me uh, if, if I'm wrong, but at 10 megapascals, it's not enough. Wait, these are one limitation of the words. We at least in this form, in this form, we cannot in we cannot add bionic matter. Actually, bionic matter is there, but it's moving with the contact matter. Actually, it's like we can imagine like the sense of those approximation, but we have only lost matter, contact matter and bionic matter, and they just give the they just give uh, the, the approximation just give us the first. The first step in the evolution that are like good to mold that is structure into the mind or linear energy. So that's what the limitation of the process. But even though we can just add the baryonic matter here, uh, it's not like a it's not a work that I showed here in the slide. But even with these molds that the source is dust, we can add the baryonic matter here. And even from my point of view, it's like a confound is the, the gravitation perspective. So it's just how to take into account the, the presence of values if they are not commoving with the dark matter. So what we have done, in my case, we have done about it. And actually, we have like a another uh, uh, preprints on archive, like I think were out was out yesterday. So we can have like this is the core velocity. What do you agree with? Well. Mm -hmm. This is the four velocity. Now we have the four velocity in this case of the matter, because we have no distinction between cold dark matter and baryonic matter. But once generalization of these models that is not that complicated to do, and we have done it in spherical symmetry, is to add the baryonic matter with a second four velocity. And actually, we can add radiation because we know that the radiation, the CMB, the matter they have like <laughs> there are there are velocities there are particular velocities so we can ask from the point of view general relativity the approximation is like okay we will assume that they are not common from point of view of general relativity is uh, it's more complex it's like we we do it uh, we need to solve the equations but uh, with a source that is not dust anymore we have like a general energy momentum tensor when the effects are kinematics that are just the result of we are using a tilted for velocity. So this is the, at least in my case, this is the part that, that I have gone using adding the bionic matter. But even though at this level of toy mode, the results are promising. Actually, when we have the voids, we can have like the void and we can have the void. And there is like, let's say, like a bias, there is a displacement between the, the baryonic matter and the, uh, and the cold dark matter. So uh, I don't know when we work on this, it's like the result where the wedding was above, but there is some displacement in this case. There is like a certain bias. So we follow like the baryonic matter, at least from the point of, this point of view, a tracer of the dark matter, and we will, we will like fail to identify, but not but that much. It's still in the range of the observation. And when we saw when we reported this paper three years ago, there is like certain, uh, there is certain, let's say, bias. I know you are using it in this context, but it's like there is still uh, in the range where it can be observed, or probably it's not, we don't have the observation to observe it, at least from my result, my paper. Okay, so thank you very much. I think this is, we are already behind our schedule. So let's thank our speaker again.